You know, Mad About You is not on Tuesday, because that other network is still playing games. So come to ABC for all the fun. And if you thought last week's Roseanne was outrageous, check out the next stop on their wild money ride. I am going to go out and find a guy with pecs to knock on. And I'm going to start knocking. Roseanne, followed by Life's Work, ABC Tuesday. I'm Carol Kloss. Tonight at 6, the Huskers bulldoze the Wildcats. News about 7 will bring you live post-game highlights in just one minute. Also, from the Newsplex, for children, by children. Find out where thousands of school supplies are going tonight. News about 7 investigates. Carol, a beautiful day across the heartland today with temperatures well into the 70s. Will it last for the second half of the weekend? Stick around, my forecast is coming up. We're live from the Newsplex. Please join us. Scott has gone to that great kennel in the sky. Well, this is a blow. And now Jim's acting a little strange. I have to take this makeup off. I feel like I'm wearing a death mask. So the game secretly arranges a canine memorial service. Should we all hide, jump out, and yell funeral? It's a fond farewell to Jim's best friend. I wonder what she's going to sing next. How much is that doggy in the casket? On the next Murphy Brown. Tonight at 10.30 on KETV. It's another winning day for the Huskers, but what does it mean for their chances as the 1996 national champions? The Newswatch 7 sports team has complete coverage. You're watching KETV Omaha. More complete coverage. More news stories. This is Newswatch 7 at 6. Good evening, everyone. I'm Carol Kloss. Well, it looked like it could be another close one, but Nebraska soared to an easy victory. Now the question, will today's battle against Kansas State make much difference in the polls? John Oakey joins us, and what a game. Yeah, it was a game for a little bit. Unfortunately, the Huskers Blackshirt showed up today, but the offense struggled a little bit going against a good Kansas State defense in the first half. For more on the game, let's go live via Starling 7 to John Schuess. And John, the offense and the team kind of picked it up in the second half. Hi there. Well, he <laughs> taken me by surprise, but I tell you what, the uh, Huskers came out here and the defense just played lights out football, winning this one today, 39 to 3, their first Big 12 conference victory. And just moments ago, Tom Osborne talked about the win this afternoon. Well, I'm just That's 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 uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Really pleased to come down here and win. I I thought it'd be anybody's ball game. And I really thought they had as good a chance to win as we did. Uh, obviously, our defense played uh, one of the finest games they've ever played. I'm very proud of uh, everything they did. And, of course, the kicking game was a huge factor. Usually when you play K-State, uh, you're lucky if you, if you come out even in the kicking game because they work hard at it. They have a good uh, concept. And, uh, of course, today with the block punts and things that happened in the kicking game, we probably picked up... Uh, 10 to 14 points in that area alone. So we were fortunate in that in that aspect of it. I thought and that's Coach Tom Osborne uh, commenting on the Huskers' big win here down at Kansas State. John, I don't think anybody expected this going into this game. People were on pins and needles, but Huskers do it again. And next week, they got Baylor, a team who was going into this weekend unbeaten. So it doesn't get much easier. And John, I don't know if you guys heard down there, but we just got late word that Amon Green, he was taken to the hospital. He is okay. No broken toe. They think it might just be a turf toe. Is that what you're hearing down there? Yeah, I, we, we watched him get carted off, and he said that he, uh, he got it bent back or something to that effect. But turf toe can be a pretty painful thing. And if he's gone and Damon Benning doesn't get back, then that leaves the eye backs awfully thin. But, you know, this D'Angelo Evans kid looked pretty good today. Yeah, I think he's doing okay there at his home state. We'll have highlights of that coming up later in sports. John, we'll hear from you tonight at 10. All Good right, job. thanks, John. We'll see you then. But, yeah, Carol, I'll tell you what, D'Angelo Evans, Husker offense, clicking there in the second half, looking pretty good, and the black shirts looking strong as ever. Well, we'll look forward to seeing more highlights in about 20 minutes. All right. Thanks, John. Well, the Huskers weren't the only ones with winning numbers today. Try the number 15,000. That's how many special boxes are now heading overseas. News at 7's Mike Jones explains. <laughs> These are volunteers. What they are loading are boxes bound for Ethiopia. What's in them? More boxes like these. These are uh, kits for children who want to start school over in Ethiopia. And each kit has been put together by one of the 
uh, thousands of Lutheran grade school students throughout the United States. It's called By Kids For Kids. Lutheran Ministry sponsors the project. It's their second year. But it's a way to uh, share Christ with the world and also to just help people because of their needs. Some of the kids are personalized, like this one from Fredonia, New York. The sender included his picture with a little note. Dear friend, I hope you enjoy these schools, Paliza. I am glad I could send them to you. Lot says those types of sentiments make all the difference in the world. I was privileged to work overseas for nine years in a third world country. And the children that receive this, they will receive this with more graciousness than any gift any kid could receive in the state at Christmas because they just don't get this stuff. Mike Jones, News Watch 7. And now those supplies are expected to be shipped directly to Ethiopia beginning tomorrow. In other news today, a rude awakening at an Iowa fraternity house. Members of Iowa State University's Theta Chi are getting help from the Red Cross tonight. The blaze badly damaged their fraternity house. No one got hurt, but the students are now homeless and without school supplies. It took firefighters five hours to control the flames. They're still investigating the cause. An Omaha man may take his case to the U.S. Supreme Court. Rich Richenberg is openly gay and a former officer at Offutt Air Force Base. Earlier this week, Richenberg lost his appeal when the high court upheld the don't ask, don't tell policy. Now the 38-year-old is considering more legal action to get his job back. In national news today, the brainchild of the supercomputer is dead. Seymour Cray spent 40 years searching for the fastest supercomputer. Cray was in a three-car accident a week ago and suffered major head and neck injuries. His vehicle rolled over three times. Cray was 71 years old. Well, for the most part, Nebraska voters are leaning toward Bob Dole, but state Democrats think their candidate can pick up at least one of Nebraska's five electoral votes. Bill Clinton is in New York today signing copies of his book. Nebraska Republicans don't think he'll pick up a single electoral vote here. It's been over 20 years since a Democratic presidential candidate carried the state. Meanwhile, Bob Dole met with George Bush today. He's getting some pointers for tomorrow's debate. The former president thinks the Republican candidate is ready. Dole says his differences with Clinton are simple. He thinks the president is just a warmed-over liberal. Or there will be two major presidential debates. The first is tomorrow night in Hartford, Connecticut. Will Bob Dole pull a surprise on the president? Bill Clinton is brushing up on his debate skills, preparing for that possibility. Tomorrow night's face-off is important because so many people will be watching. And you can watch the debate right here on Channel 7 tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. We'll have complete coverage and local reaction. Well, the search is on for the great pumpkin. With Halloween quickly approaching, many Heartland kids are trying to find the perfect pick. News at 7, Cindy Andrew tags along as the kids search. It's off to the pumpkin patch, but first you must cross the haunted forest. Desiree isn't having fun. Well, I hate to see this all these scary people here. No need to be scared. They're not real people. That doesn't matter to Desiree. You want to walk down in here? Uh -uh, no. no. Ghosts don't scare Alan. They're windy. Finally, the pumpkin patch. The small ones are going to be down in here on the other side of this Indian corn. Off they go, looking for that perfect pumpkin. It doesn't take Alan long. It's just the biggest one I wanted. It's going to be scary. I found the big one, but I think my only problem is going to be getting it back to the trailer. No problem. I'll get it. It is kind of heavy. This would be a good workout with some pumpkins. Kara's mom will be amazed at her strength. Meanwhile, Daniel's still looking. Mom, is this one good? Oh, it's fine when it doesn't have a hole in it. That one's got a hole. Here's mine. That's a big one, huh? Yeah, I wanted this one. You like that one? Yeah, I'm going to show you. Maybe if Daniel knew he'd have to carry it, he would have chosen something smaller. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Maybe some great pumpkins are meant to stay in the pumpkin patch. I don't know how you would get this out of here. Cindy Andrew, Newswatch 7. Well, that was our photographer, Pete Ferguson. You'll be glad to know he is okay. The Bellevue Berry and Pumpkin Patch is open daily through Halloween. 
And a special thanks tonight to everyone who came to our Newsplex open house. To give you some idea of how many people turned out today, we'll take a look at this. More than 2,000 KETV fans toured our new Newsplex. Mary Nemmers, Margaret Booman, and I gave mock newscasts, and Scott Mayo and Jay Cardosi gave folks a behind the scenes look at the weather. Thanks to you, it was a huge success. And still ahead on Newswatch 7, more from today's Husker match with the Wildcats. John Oakey has all the exciting highlights and latest information. And next, eruptions beyond control. Then, Jay Cardosi has all your weekend weather. Please join us from the Newsplex in two minutes. Perkins is teaming up with a famous name, Butterball to bring you an exciting dining experience. The authentic butterball turkey is slow roasted to perfection for our new Country Club Benedict. The new turkey fajita. The new turkey Philly sandwich. And our classic turkey and dressing dinner. Butterball and Perkins. Breakfast, dinner, and everything in between. The Murphys will rob. Really? Don't let an energy-robbing furnace rip you off. Call your carrier dealer. Only he has the world's most energy-efficient furnace. The Weathermaker system will save you up to 40% on your heating costs. See participating carrier dealers about special Fall 96 rebates of up to $400. If your heating and cooling job is worth doing, it's worth doing right. The way Shannon does business. See how the professionals at Shannon can save you money while giving you year-round comfort. Call your carrier dealer today. are amazing. Wait till you see them live. Enough already. Fed up with crime? So are we. Since 1982, News Watch 7 and Crime Stoppers have been cuffing criminals, making the heartland safer for you. If you're fed up, push back. Crime Stoppers, only on News Watch 7, Tuesdays at 6 and 10. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to News Watch 7 at 6. You know, it turned out to be a fantastic summer-like day here in the heartland. Look at these temperatures on WeatherNet 7 behind me. At this hour, many locations in the 70s, the middle and upper 70s, and it promises to be a beautiful evening. How about outside right now? Live Skycam 7 continues to show tons of sun across the downtown area. And again, it was just gorgeous. You know, the past couple of days, we've been talking about summer-like warmth, and it arrived today. At least on the hour, the high temperature was 77 here in Omaha, 78 degrees for the afternoon high in the capital city. On our weather notebook now, we are expecting a great evening across the area. The clear skies will continue, the warm temperatures. Readings will likely slip back into the 60s as the evening hours progress, but that will set us up for a breezy and warm day tomorrow. Not quite as warm as what it was today, but I still think we'll see a mixture of clouds and sunshine and temperatures, which will likely be in the upper 60s and the lower 70s. A look at the clouds in the last 24 hours showing lots of sunshine across the area today. Just a few clouds drifting by last evening, but again, those are out of here. You can see another band of moisture now organizing off to our west and northwest. That is associated with a cold front that will be sweeping down into the heartland tomorrow and likely bring us some cooler weather starting tomorrow night and also into Monday. As for the temperatures around the heartland by late this afternoon or early this evening, look at this, it's summer-like out there. Temperatures in the 70s, even a few lower 80s. A pair of 82s from Rapid City up towards Bismarck with 79s being reported from Huron down towards North Platte. 73 in Dodge City and 75 in the Mile High City there of Denver. All right, the cold front is now organizing off to our west and northwest. And again, this front will sweep down across the area late tonight and tomorrow morning and we'll start to feel some cooler weather moving in by this time tomorrow, tomorrow night and also into Monday. 
Outside right now, it's great. Temperatures in the middle and upper 70s all throughout with lots of sunshine. The relative humidity, not too bad, 42%. A gusty south wind continuing to warm us upwards of 23 miles an hour. Now again, for tomorrow morning, here comes the front. It'll be moving by. You know, I think it's going to come through the metro area on the dry side, just a mixture of clouds and sunshine. But tomorrow afternoon, places like southwestern Iowa, northwestern Missouri, that front may trigger, uh, trigger a shower, perhaps a thunder shower. But again, much of the viewing area will stay dry. We'll have pleasant conditions, breezy conditions, and afternoon highs. A little bit cooler than today, a mix of upper 60s and low 70s. Let's check out the forecast details now. For tonight, mostly clear and mild. We'll drop it off to 55 for the low. For tomorrow, a mixture of clouds and sunshine. That slight chance for a shower, especially in far southwestern Iowa or northwestern Missouri. Otherwise dry, highs of 72. And as we move into Monday, Carol, a little bit cooler, fall-like. Temperatures around 63.